it's so pretty. Thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Paul Davis and I'm joined by my good friend Rotem Sivan. And I love what you just played. It sounds like jazz to me. I want to learn some about it. Can you introduce yourself just briefly to the viewers? Sure. Hey, what's up? Um, so I'm Rodem Sivan. <laughs> I'm a guitar player and producer. I'm based in New York, and um, yeah, I'm coming from a heavy jazz background, and yeah. uh, we want to talk a little bit about the music. The intro you were just playing, Jazz 101. Can we boil it down? What what was that? What? Well, I was just playing a two five one progression in the key of C, but maybe we can start with just the one. Start with the one. It was in C, you said. So the one in C to me sounds like C major. It sounds beautiful, you know, but maybe if we're talking about jazz, it could be nice to add the seventh. So adding the B natural. And you know what I'm doing right now here, I'm dropping the five as well. The reason is that the main notes that are important in the chord are the three and the seven. The reason is if we're playing the chord, the three tells us whether it's major or minor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's the three, yeah, that's important. Exactly, and the seven tells us whether it's major seven, so that's home bass tonic, or seven. And melody-wise, what can you play on this? Maybe I'll play something and we'll talk about it. Mm. Instant jazz feels over here. <laughs> so what did you play? Can you enlighten me? Yeah, so I mean, it was very simple. I was really playing the arpeggio. I was playing C major seven from the note B, the seven, ah, okay. to the one. But was adding that little nine. Ah, the nine is? Nine is basically the two, but with an octave displacement. So in the key of C, it would be C and then D, the two, yeah. and then an octave up. So exactly. That's where to spoil it, yeah. Okay, that sounds great. So, melody. Yeah? Nice. Okay, level one, one more time. Three, four. Sweet. But this sounds like jazz, but not nearly as cool as what you did. So, how can we spice this up? Level two. All right, so maybe we can take that two, that D that we just played, and put it in the chord itself. So we have mm. the C major 7, which is really cool. Yeah. But what happens if we just put that D? Yes! So we're just adding another extension to the chord, basically. Exactly. Okay, so what's the name of the chord? This would be C major 7, 9. Okay. Lovely chord, I love that voicing. Okay, so... Let me play something. Yeah, 3, 4... some spice in there. I was using the same idea of the arpeggio that we just played, but I was using a chromatic note, this B flat to B. So B flat is maybe the worst note you can play on a Ooh, s yeah, yes. it's disaster. Let's play it together. Three, four. Yeah, that's horrible. That's really horrible. So, so why? Why do you play it? Yeah, be because basically the chromatic note, like the name, chromatic comes from the word chroma, which means colorful. And then I'm just adding a little really? color. I didn't know that. <laughs> so you're adding that strange odd sounding note to eventually go to a note that falls on the chord. Really. Exactly. So. <laughs> I got it, I can do jazz. Woo. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool actually. So three, four. Ah, I got it. Awesome. Nice. Is there a level three, Rotem? Sure is. Okay, teach me. Um, maybe we can add another chord or two. So, I mean, playing C major 7, 9 is great, but what happens if we add a 2-5-1 to this mix? Okay, yeah, sure. I've heard about 2 5 ones before, but I'd love you to show me. So maybe we can use the same idea with those shell chords, which means one, three, seven, and play D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. Oh, it goes a little too quick. Okay, so we're in the key of C, we're playing a two, five, one. So the two in C, C, 
D, right? Exactly. And the two chord in a major key is usually minor. Minor That's seventh. Okay, so we play D. Ah, I see it. So this is exactly the same voicing, basically, as I did at C. One, three, and the seven. Exactly. One, three, and the seven. But now it's minor third and minor seventh. Ah, oh, sweet. Yep, I get it. And then we go to the five, which is G, because we all know G, C, the five, one. So G seventh. How did you voice that? So I was playing G, F, and B, so one, seven, and three. Again, okay, yes. having those three. That's a nice voicing. Awesome. So we've got. Exactly. Maybe I can play a melody, but I would like to kind of show. How about if I play just a scale for a second? What scale? C major? C major scale. <laughs> three, four. Yeah, that sounds really sweet, actually. Sounds great, right? Yeah. I mean, C major... But you're playing a scale, why does it sound good? I mean, a scale is not a scale. A scale is just a beautiful melody. Right, so if you yeah. listen to it from a kind of a center point of view, it's all about tension. I've never been blown away by a major scale. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Okay, last time, level three it is. Three, four. Jazz! All right, sounds pretty cool to me. But I guess this is not everything there is to it, right? Can we, we get can. some more schwung to it? We can, we can. <laughs> How about we take that note that we had on the C major, that D, yeah. the 9, and add that 9 to the D minor. What do you think? So the 9 from D, or the 9 from C? The 9 for the D. Ah, ah. so that's an E? Yes, sir. Like this, mm -hmm. right? It's so beautiful, huh? Sounds good, pretty cool. Yeah. And then on G we do? I would keep that note there. Ooh, I would keep that note, that E there, and then you get the 13. On, on top of the G. Mm -hmm. You feeling it? Yeah, I'm feeling it, definitely. Sorry, yeah, D minor, seven, nine. To G, seven, 13. 13. To C, major seven, nine. Nine. Yeah. Beautiful chorus. It is good. It's a nice, and nice how would a melody look on top of this? Um, let me try to play something, and I'm gonna just use the framework of C major, so no chromatic notes, no none. No none. Let's see, C major skill. Jazzed. Jazz. Three, four. That sounds pretty cool. That's right? almost a lo-fi kind of hip-hop sound. <laughs> yeah, we got there. That's often like jazz inspired, right? It's That's true, like all these... <laughs> minor 7 9 is really that. Okay, the 2 five, one sounds great, but I mean, I've seen crazier stuff. What can, we, what can we do? Well, we can maybe play something to lead us to that D minor. So, I mean, again, the D minor 9 sounds awesome, yeah. but how about we play A7 before? That's a secondary dominant. Yeah. So, basically, Oh, you know what? I'm gonna play E half diminished, then A7. So basically, we're playing a secondary dominant, kind of two five in D minor to lead us to that chord. Ah, okay, I get it. So D minor, we basically see D minor as the target spot, and we're gonna take another two five one leading to that D minor, and the D minor is again the starting point to get us to C major. Exactly. Ah, exactly. that's awesome. So on E we play. Half diminished, yep. or people say minor seven flat five as well, if I remember correctly. True. Yeah. yeah. So E half diminished to A seven mm -hmm. to D minor nine to G seven. Oh, and 
maybe C69. Oh, that's the typical jazz sound here. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, that's sweet. So, or let's do it twice as fast, maybe. Yeah. Sounds good. This sounds like proper jazz to me. <laughs> So what would a guitar player play over this? Let me, let me come up with a melody. I'm gonna still play something in C major using the same framework of the position, but a little bit more articulating that sound. So are you following the chords or just a few notes from the chords or? Yes and no. I am gonna pay attention to them, but I'm not gonna play anything chromatic. Okay, three, four, and... sweet. Basically, I'm just taking the melody. I'm starting from the note E. And then the same thing, the exact same melody from the note D. Ah. I get it. And also the high notes fall exactly on those dominant chords. So exactly. It falls on the exactly, A, so it's yeah. the fifth. I get it. It's cool, right? <laughs> Beautiful. But very simple. Just C major. Yeah. But then the right notes from C major. <laughs> and then on the C major, I just played the arpeggio. Uh, simple, I mean, but effective. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Anyway, this was level five. Give me some more schwung. All right. So how about we add a little chromatic chord now? So we have the E half to A7, yeah. but how about we do E half, B flat Whoa. to A? Just I get it. as a passing chord, you know what I'm saying? Just like one, two, three, four, one, uh, two. I know that sound, I've heard that before. Okay, so one, two, three, and then maybe Oh, I know this one. Yes, 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 great. Perfect. Oh, actually, oh, what? Maybe you can add another chord there. So the home chord, the C, and we go a half step above it and play a dominant seventh, yeah. nine. Yeah, or. Yeah, okay, cool, I got it. Melody wise. Let me play something a little more chromatic. Let's do it. Let's see how it sounds. Well, Oh. <laughs> Ooh. So what I was doing here, I was starting from the note B flat, which is a part of the chord E half. Yeah. And then going to A, and then I'm kind of thinking of this whole section is kind of targeting around this note F. So I'm basically playing this because I'm basically going to that flat 13 of the A7. Oh, yeah, exactly, A7. Yeah, so the minor of the D as well. Exactly, and that's why it sounds like we're going to that D minor. This is so cool. I've never think of approaching like a note like that. It's like going that way and then you're finally there. Nope, going the other way almost there and then there you are like exactly That's it's so like cool. you know like it's like we're we're trying to get to paris and there are many ways to get there but yeah. we are eventually going to make it you know or <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah it's 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 so not what i'm used to but it's so cool All right, awesome. When you play it like 10 times and learn from other jazz solo, you start to see patterns that usually happen a lot. Exactly, it's like a language, you know. We can go further. We, we can stretch it even further. We sure can. Okay, so how about we 
By we, I mean you. <laughs> oh. Add some walking bass. Walking bass? Yeah, just some sure. motion, you know. <laughs> Why not? I'm just sitting here, so doing nothing. Why not do a bass guitar player as well? Okay, I know something about walking bass. So, um, like. Boom, 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 boom. But with no. the chords. But with the chords, okay, uh. so. Is that not. Yes. Nice. Okay, so the thing for me about walking bass is usually the most important note is the first one because that's just the root note of the chord. And the last one that should be one semitone above or below your target chord, usually. It's not set in stone, but right. that just sounds good. It works. Bum. Just like the approaching chords, but now just the bass note. Yeah. And then on the A I'm playing the major triad. Doom, 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 approaching note for D. Yeah, perfect. Okay, exactly. yeah. Just great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow this feels kind of natural to me. It so, feels good, yeah. Okay, so walking bass, guys. Anyway, um, and let me stretch it a little bit more. Not yeah. crazy, but just like a little more. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Three, four. So I basically started from the note E and I was Whoa. thinking basically going from the note E to the note G which is a part of the chords, yeah, the, the minor, part of, so, okay. of E half. And then I went to this basically kind of like thinking about A7. So the whole section that 2-5 I'm kind of thinking about E half A7 and going to that C sharp. And it's the same thing, it's the Beautiful. seventh of E half diminish to the third of A7. And then I did So it's a change between E half diminish to A7, and you're really um, like emphasizing that by the notes you're playing. E. Exactly. A7. So basically, when we're playing jazz, we kind of want to articulate and describe the harmonic progression. So we want to show what happens. And one of the points of transition is between beat 4 to the beat 1, to the next bar. Yeah. And this is exactly okay. what happens here. I'm articulating this E half diminished, the 7th to the A7. And then I was kind of like playing around, around it. And then I went to D minor. And did the same thing actually, like articulating the chord basically, yeah. and then and and that motion, the seven of D minor to yeah. the three of G, G, exactly on the downbeat of the new bar. Yeah. So it could also be that I don't play rhythm guitar at all, but I would still hear the changes in your solo. Exactly. So exactly. instead of playing over C, just. You don't hear a chord change. Right, it could be C, it, right, in yeah. that sense it's one but center. But if you play a... Uh, you hear... You wow. start hearing the chord. And then I guess at the end, on the G7, I was kind of playing this sharp 9 to the flat 9. And then instead of resolving it on the 5, I went here... to the major 7. But it's, it's usually being resolved down, so sharp 9 to flat 9, that's the classic move. So I just did the opposite. Ah, it's really, really awesome to get an insight into playing some of these uh, crazier jazz lines, which sometimes it's still... not that crazy, right? Well, if you see it explained, it's crazy, but if the tempo is like... <laughs> the changes are going all over the place, I think it's still... It could be challenging, but you know what? Like when I see you play some of these crazy shreds, I'm like, what is he doing? You know, <laughs> you were showing me before today. You were like, check yeah. this out. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. That's and you're funny, just yeah. shredding it, you know? It's the same thing. Yeah. It's a different dialect, you know? It's a, the yeah. same thing you were showing me that, those mm. those things. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And, you know, this is just it's your funny. dialect. Okay, so before we jump in a cool jam, um, how can we follow you, Rotem? Uh, well, I have a YouTube channel. And also there is uh, Instagram and some music on Spotify. Cool. Links are below, of course. Check out his channel if you're interested into jazz or 
seeing a cool guitarist with a cool pedal board and some interesting sounds going on. Um, thank you so much for showing me the ways. Oh.